Here's Joey. No? Nobody? Nobody home. In the desert, nothing to drink except for his own reclaimed water. Bear Grylls can do it, so can I. It's a little salty though. And don't get me started on the worms. I thought my cats had it bad. Oy vey. Covered in mammoth tusk. Oh, the tasty spice. The spice below. Oh, I'm back, guys. I'm back. I'm back from the desert. The nights were sandy. The days were hot, but the sunsets, ugh, they were to die for. Most everything was to die for. It's a little harsh out there, but. You know me. I wasn't actually in the desert. I'm not my brother. I don't do survival stuff. I love my Wi-Fi. I love my bed. I'm not going out there. If I didn't get this from the desert, then what is it? Here's what you've been waiting to see. The sandworm tooth. Urgh. Arg. Nah, it's not a sandworm tooth. This is a 20 to 40,000 year old mummified mammoth tusk that I got from my buddy Steve at Vermont Freehand. As I started this process with YouTube, I thought to myself, you know, how could you make the Dune knife? When I saw the trailer about a year ago, I, I ran to read the book. I loved it. I've been watching the trailer probably a hundred times. I'm super excited. I love Blade Runner 2049, so I am pumped. And you know, I thought of things like PVC, I thought of plastic, I even bought a piece of imitation ivory because I believed that that might be the closest thing. And I said, I don't want to make it out of any of those other products or materials because I want to make it out of something that they would have had to do. They're in the desert, they're using what they have. So today we are going to make it out of what I think is the most accurate material that I can find, which is again, Mammoth tusk. I am holding a mammoth tusk in my hand. This is insane, guys. Not only does this look like a tooth, but it also is probably the closest we are ever going to get to the same material that the Fremen made their knives after. I mean, they're out there in the desert, facing the elements, fighting against the different houses and the clans that are in the empire. And I am so excited to bring this to you guys, to the point I've already started. I even got the blade all mapped out on here. I'm gonna show you guys how we are going to take this 40,000 year mammoth tusk and we are gonna transform it into a Dune Chris knife. That's a knife. Now I'm gonna show you cutting me out, cutting it out. Cutting me out? Show might be better if they cut me out, but they're not gonna fire me. Anyways, we're gonna cut the knife out of the mammoth tusk. So I'm gonna zoom in the camera, put it in time lapse, hold my breath, put my life in the saw's hands. I'm terrified of breaking this thing. So let's see what we can do though. Let's see if we can make this work. Now here comes the detail work. I gotta take this thing and try to flatten it and get it the right shape. I'm recording, what do you want? I need to flatten this and I'm going to try to do what I've heard a lot of classic woodworkers and people who work with metal, you know, maybe it's more of like a Shintoism thing, but I'm gonna to try to work with the soul of the piece here. This is something that is so old, it, it's so hard for me to comprehend. And I don't want to just take chunks off here, take chunks off there. I'm going to try to work with this. What happened accidentally too, is I managed to get the grain to pretty much follow the shape of the blade in a, in a nice curve. Um, I got to be very careful. What I've heard is this stuff is very brittle and what you don't, 
No, because you're not here. Is it smells awful. It is awful. This, I mean, I've worked with deer antler before, making like knife handles and stuff, but this stuff is worse. It really stinks. It is not fun. Anyways, we're gonna keep going. Sanding it with a belt sander. Oh my goodness, it really stinks. Uh, I'm gonna continue to shape this thing and draw on this thing. So after a nerve wracking experience, the rough shaping is in. Uh, I don't know if you can see the grain that is running through this. Man, this is gonna be cool. If I ever have to, you know, go in the desert and survive, I don't know, I might be taking this with me. We are on to the next step of the project, which is gonna be making the handle. So, I would like to show you my collection of wood. This is all the different pieces of different things, this and that, rosewood, burls, black walnut, uh, crazy plywood, all the stuff I've collected through all my time working on projects. But what we are looking for is this right here. This is a piece of a rosewood or, or, I'll tell you, I don't know where I got this thing from. All I know is it's dark. If you see the picture that I showed before of the handle, the prop, it's a nice dark wood. It looks like it's very dense. What we are going to do is we are going to be taking some aluminum and we are going to cut this out, wrap it around the wood here that I am going to carve into the handle shape. I got a new blowtorch. Well, you've been working with a sparker for so long, it's good to have a trigger. So, we're gonna start cutting this piece out. It's about as uneven as you can get. So, if you have a couple flat sides, you can always manage to cut that to one more. So, I am on to the next step. Uh, I've realized there's a massive sand pit in this, which all that means is there was some kind of inclusion or there was, there was a bug in it and it has formed its own little hole. Uh, a lot of people would say that, let's get rid of it. You know, let's, let's cut it out. I tend to disagree. Uh, when I would do Briarwood pipe, uh, I love that kind of thing, it's natural. If I was doing a smooth pipe, Yes, you know, it's polished out, you wanna see the grain, you can't use it. But if you're doing a rough pipe, then yeah, you can leave stuff like that in, and it's really cool. Why does, why hasn't he printed out a picture to size? And, you know, laid it onto here? Well, there's a simple answer for that. I don't have a printer. What I do have is a pretty good drawing hand and painter's tape. Uh, right here, you can see what part I'm trying to make. I'm going to redraw that onto here, and then we will cut out the basic shape, then mold and form it, carving it. <sighs> Nothing like day old coffee. So, I have the shape cut out. So the next step is for me to take my trusty Chinese die grinder that I got for $20 and goes like a bat out of hell and I'm terrified for my life. That and a bunch of carbide, come over here. Carbide bits and as you can see here, there are some black lines. That is where the metal is gonna be inlaid. So what I am going to do is I'm going to carve out almost like a shelf where that part will be thinner. So that way I have an area for the metal to sit against. Ingenious use of my jigsaw. It did an awesome job. I'm actually really surprised. Um, I didn't know I could do this. I probably ruined the blade, but you know, the blade is like five bucks for a 30 pack of them. I'm gonna pull the sticker off, 
do some tuning up, file it a little bit, and then we are going to start wrapping it around the handle, forming it. Okay, so, note to self, whoo, that's hot. Note to self, make sure this is very securely placed. We are going to try again, this time properly clamping. I think that's it. If that sticks well, I can shape it a little bit and then ball peen it. For now, I'm going to do some work on the handle, see if I can texture it a little bit, make it look a little nicer because once it's in, it's in. I don't think it's coming out. Uh, I am so close to having this thing done. Uh, I keep trying to braise it and it just keeps whew, melting. It keeps melting and melting and melting and I've got this thing so close to being done. I gotta go take a break, walk away from the project. I'll be back, we'll get it done. This is my first YouTube apology. <laughs> I made a mistake. I melted it, I melted it. I think it was just too thin and it melted. Oh, anyways, we gotta move past, <laughs> I gotta move past it. <laughs> I gotta move past it. Uh, so I made a bigger piece of aluminum. We're gonna braise this on and hopefully fill in all the holes of this. We're gonna get it. We're gonna blowtorch it. It is all soldered on there. Oh man, that looks pretty good. With this, it's definitely got a pock marked rough look. If I was to make this out of like a clay and then make a mold of it, we could definitely get it the way we want. And if I had a milling machine, I could mill out a solid piece of aluminum. But I think as far as the look, the kind of shaggy chic, bougie look, I think we got it. We're gonna get this fit up with the wood. That way it will all be one piece again. Here it is guys the completed handle. Oops. I heard some cracking and some crunching and I think I almost had a heart attack. Look at that, all that color in there. It is just so neat. All these neat colors, wow. Okay guys, next thing we're gonna do is I'm going to carve in the runes that we see in the prop right here. Oh yeah, those are pretty nice, yeah, yeah. So let's see if we can recreate them. I'm gonna do my best. I got some microscopic carbide bits that I got from Harbor Freight 
this new store that opened up. I don't know if you've heard of it. Harbor Freight was founded in 1977 in North Hollywood of all places. That is my recommendation. Go to Harbor Freight. I love you guys. Please sponsor me. Both sides are officially ruined up. Yeah, all the mythic runes and they both look pretty good, but I think this side just looks a little bit better. I have cut down the shank. We are going to file it so there's also a cut on the sideways so that it fits into that little wooden disc. Then once that's done, we're gonna glue the blade to the wooden disc and then the whole thing is getting drilled out in the handle and it's all gonna go inside. And by the end of tonight, I'm gonna have one knife. And then we could do some more detail work, some finished sanding, and then it's on to the sheath. And then we'll be done. I, I don't wanna get too excited because you know, it's always, it's always the last thing, you know, they say, it's not over till the fat lady sings. I don't know who the fat lady is, but I feel bad that we're always talking about her, you know? What did she ever do to get deserve to get brought up every five minutes? Okay, guys, this is what rushing gets me not buying the same bit. I accidentally drilled through the side. When I drilled my hole, it got just a hair off. This whole side's like perfect, but this side, it made a divot. And then it almost went through the aluminum on the back, which I, ooh, whew. Thank God it didn't because the wood we can fix. So what I'm gonna show you is what I'm gonna do to fix this. I'm gonna take a paper plate and I'm gonna take all the wood shavings around here. I am going to mix that with some tabletop epoxy that I have, which hardens really, really hard. And I'm going to make more of like a paste. Whew, what a mess of tape. <laughs> I should have thought of how I was going to make sure the blade was straight before I mixed up the epoxy and set it. I don't know, you think I got it? I'm not sure. <laughs> Guys, it is the next morning here. Oh, restless sleep, restless sleep, worrying about it, wondering if it's gonna work out. What's gonna happen? Well, I have an answer for you guys. It worked. Oh my goodness, you ready? Look at this, this is the morning's work. The next step is going to be doing a little bit of wood filling around the guard here. And then we are going to darken this up with some stain, as you can see in the picture here. Darker near the guard as it transitions into this lighter material. The filling is done in all the holes. I think I'm gonna do the symbols and the handle. I am only gonna do one side. I'm gonna do the outside, which is this one. So they go to their breast. They do their forehead. It's kind of like, uh, what is it? Uh, Attack on Titan? Or they're, but I think they're like this or something. If can you not see this soldier's heartfelt salute? I think that is pretty accurate to the movie. This is better than I'd ever hoped for. As he, as he does in the trailer, you know, he, you know. I think it looks pretty good. We gotta do one more step. Now, I took the time to draw out the picture of this onto the wood already. Now, uh, I could just whip something out really quickly. I'm fairly competent at leather working. I could make some kind of cheesy sheath to put on during the costume. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it the way that I think they probably made it. Uh, 
if they were in the desert. So what we start out with is a wooden sheath formed to the blade, chiseled out, so the blade fits in it really nice, and then we round the sheath off, and then we end up with where we have a smooth wooden sheath. And you wrap leather around it that's been soaked in glue. And then I've got some interesting stuff. I've bought some beads, some different ropes, and I even have a little segment of spinal bone that I got from my bone collection. That's not a sign of anything. Lots of people have bone collections. Joseph Fowler is the bone collector. Anyways, I got this from, uh, you know, I, I collect little weird things and I found a possum skull in the woods and it had a spinal bone attached to it. From my understanding of it is they try to personalize as much as possible. It's not just a weapon, it's a symbol of their culture. Oh, it's gonna be so cool. So cool, guys. Harvested spies. That's it, guys. It's the end of the project. We got it all done. All in this nice, fancy sheath. We even got some bones on there. We got the runes carved in. I think it came out awesome. I'm really proud of this. All the metal working, you know, the pommel being bigger. But you're ready to see the crowning jewel. The sandworm tooth blade. Look at that, guys. Isn't that awesome? This thing came out so nice. Check it out. Look at all the grain on that thing. I am so proud of it, and I love the runes all on the handle and what we got on the back or the, the beginning of the blade here. I can't even talk today. I'm so excited. Man, this is a momentous occasion for me. It's my first video. I'm really excited to be sharing this with you. I think it really came out great, but you tell me what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Did I do a good job? Did I capture the essence of the Fremen Chris knife? Let me know. And see you guys there. I'm just enjoying the desert sunset at the end of another dusty day here on Arrakis. Well guys, it's been fun. We had a lot of laughs. We made a lot of things. It's been a good time. But many miles before I sleep, here at Joseph Fowler Maker, we're always innovating. We're always making new things. I gotta get back to my home planet on Earth start making next month's project, which is gonna be Wheel of Time. As we all know, the wheel never stops. The weaving of the wheel, always turning. This is not the beginning, but it is a beginning. Anyways, I'm gonna go back to watching the sunset a little bit. We will catch you guys next video. Wait a, isn't 
there a rule in the Fremen that nobody's allowed to see the Chris knife and leave Dune alive? Well, I guess there's no options. Like Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> hey Zendaya. Okay. <laughs> Hello. It's nice to meet you. <laughs>